it started about 20 years ago that a lot, thousands and thousands and thousands of Muslims are being converted to Christianity, not through evangelism. Nobody spoke to them, but Jesus used to appear to them in dreams and visions. And he used to tell them, this, the, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And they call him Isa, you know, in the Quran. They don't call him Christ or Jesus, they call him Isa. And he, when, appear, when he appears to them, he tells them, this, I am the one. And uh, a lot of them uh, were, some of them, when the government knew, they used to arrest them and torture them, torture them in prison in order uh, to, to deny it. And they never deny it. They say, we will never leave it. We are ready to die for him. Mm. Yes. And, and they, 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 and a lot of them left Egypt. And now we have, they have special meetings for them. I had a call from a friend of mine who lives in a city in Upper Egypt. She called me, she told me, Urfa, you know, this Fayyum, it's called, this city is called Fayyum. It's the center of the extremist Muslim brothers. And they were the ones who voted uh, for uh, Morsi, the, the, the Muslim uh, brother. And she told me, now we have so many uh, uh, Muslims coming to us asking for Bibles. And, and we are not even able to supply the need. It is so great. And we are asking them, why do you want the Bible? She said, because we have seen Jesus in our dreams and in our visions. And we want to know him. And then now they have, they, they gathered a big group and they give them Bible study. They take them to retreats to teach them about the Lord. How about persecution for them? Uh, they, Did they experience uh, persecution? Some of them are very daring, but they, and, and a lot of them don't announce it. They just, you know, yes. amazing what the Lord is doing in, in, in Egypt. And, uh, I, and then this recently with the 21 that were, that were slaughtered, uh, do you know anything how they... Because nobody can believe uh, to the extent that how, how the guts they had, the courage they had, and even the Muslims, when they saw them in the television, they used to call the television and say, what is, how can they be like lions like this? He said, we can't, we, we don't understand how these uh, Christians are, are, are standing like this, like lions, and they, they, they are seeing this terror, and they are seeing the knives that they were going to be slain, and they stood like this. And you know what they told them? Some of them said, oh, because they have been intoxicated. It's not true. Uh, they must have seen something. The Lord must have shown them something. The most, the Lord must have been there with them. Right. Otherwise, they could have never stood like this. To have this kind of it's strength, this kind of courage. Strength. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, and their families, Yvette had big programs. She went last week to meet their families in the, this village. And she can tell you a lot about uh, the program she made with them. The God is, <coughs> is, is comforting them to an extent. She said, we were ashamed when we saw their faith, these families, how we didn't have this kind of faith. But the government was so good to them, they gave them uh, 100,000 Egyptian pounds for each person, who, each family who lost uh, one, and sees, oh, sees, God bless him. He, he, you can't imagine the, what heart of a man, of what a heart this man has, sees our president. We never had any president like this, never. He loves the poor. He's so compassionate. And he said, I cannot see anybody suffering. I cannot bear it. He said, I cannot bear it. Unique wow. man. He Good is man. a unique man. Yeah. Wow. That's because nobody can believe uh, uh, to the extent that how, how the guts they had, 
the courage they had. And even the Muslims, when they saw them in the television, they used to call the television and say, what is, how can they be like lions like this? He said, we can't, we, we don't understand how these uh, Christians are, are upstanding like this, like lions, and they, they, they are seeing this terror, and they are seeing the knives that they were going to be slain, and they stood like this. And you know what they told them, some of them said, oh, because they have been intoxicated. It's not true. They must have seen something. The Lord must have showed them something. The most, the Lord must have been there with them. Right. Otherwise, they could have never stood like this. To have this kind of strength. It's this strength, kind of courage. strength. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. And their families. Yvette had big programs. She went last week to meet their families in the, this village. And she can tell you a lot about uh, the program she made with them. Okay. The, God is, really, <coughs> is, is comforting them to an extent. She said, we were ashamed when we saw their faith, these families, how we didn't have this kind of faith. But the government was so good to them, they gave them uh, 100,000 Egyptian pounds for each person who each family who lost uh, one and sees, oh, sees, God bless him. He, he, you can't imagine the, what heart of a man, of what a heart this man has, sees our president. We never had any president like this, never. He loves the poor, he's so compassionate. And he said, I cannot see anybody suffering. I cannot bear it. He said, I cannot bear it. Unique wow. man. He That's is a unique man. Yeah. Wow. That's no, if they know, then they try to get them. But most uh, of the time, they don't know about them. They don't uh, claim it. Gotcha. And, and, and a lot of them leave Egypt, left Egypt, because they will be persecuted. But some of them said no. We will stay and bring our families oh. yes. to Jesus. Oh, yes. wow. um, experiences and wonderful testimonies. Actually, maybe if you have time, I will tell you about a particular testimony that when I was in the United States and uh, I had, I, and Benny Hinn, I told you, Benny Hinn invited me to go to the United States. I told you this. I, I did. No. Oh, that's a big, that's another thing. In, in the 90s, we didn't have this, we didn't have Christian channels in Egypt. And somebody gave me the book, Good Morning Holy Spirit. Do you know that book? Yeah. 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 And I didn't know who wrote that book. I, I didn't even hear his name before because, you know, we didn't have anything, uh, no Christian channels. I never heard his name. <coughs> but the idea of the Holy Spirit touched me. At that time, we didn't know the Holy Spirit. We didn't have any teaching about the Holy Spirit in Egypt at that time. And when I read that book, I finished it in three nights and I was amazed. How? This is the Holy Spirit and we don't know there is a Holy Spirit and, 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 and how come we, nobody taught us about this? I was, I didn't know what to do. But I went to tell people about the Holy Spirit, but the book was in English. And, and the people don't understand English. And the Lord put on my heart to translate although I didn't know who wrote it, to translate that book into Arabic on tapes. Wow. And this never happened before because a book is translated into a book. Yes. You don't translate a book on tapes. It's yes. the first time. And then uh, this uh, uh, servant of the Lord came to my home with a small recorder and he sat in my dining room on the table and I, I used to look with my eyes to the English and my mouth says in Arabic simultaneously. Yes. 
the translation. And he recorded the whole, we, we recorded the whole book like this. And then we, we said, we should give out these tapes to everybody to know the Holy Spirit. And we started doing this printing to let people know the Holy Spirit. Nobody heard about the Holy Spirit. Nothing. Nobody speaks about the Holy Spirit. Until uh, this was in the 90s. And then when later on when the, uh, the, the people started bringing dishes, when dishes came to Egypt, and we started to see the dish and we started to see Christian channels, someone could and see, you know, the man you translated the book, he's on uh, the TV, come and see what he looks like. And it was the first time I see Benin in on the day. After, I, after uh, several years after I translated his book, and until uh, 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 he came to Dubai, to give a crusade and the group of our friends went to Dubai to attend and they heard about Good Morning Holy Spirit and they came back to, to Egypt and said uh, we, ha we want that book how can we get it and somebody told them uh, somebody translated it into tapes so they, they looked for me and they came to me did you translate the book I said yes he said what can we do we want this book and uh, these tapes so the Lord put on my heart to go in a studio and do it professionally because it was going to go around the whole world. Oh my gosh. Wow. So I went back <laughs> to a studio, had it all translated again, and it was done professionally and on a CD, and then we, we put it on a CD and we printed about half million going around the whole world. All the Arab countries, everywhere, and people you used to, to, to uh, be touched. When they hear it, they get touched by the Holy Spirit. Uh, it changed a lot of their lives. Until one day, Yvette uh, started to work for TBN, and she, she was connected with Benny, and she told him. And one night, I had a telephone call. Uh, it was about 2006. And somebody said, is this Arfa? I said, yes. He said, this is Benny Hinn. I said, what? <laughs> he said, this is Benny Hinn. Aren't you Arfa? I said, yes. He said, I would like to invite you to come to the United States and I will send you the ticket. I want to meet you. And it all started from here. And I went to the United States. I met him. I had a wonderful time. I had dinners with him, evenings with him. And then uh, they told me, what would you like to do? I said, I'd like to attend one of your crusades. And he said, okay, I have a crusade in Boston and I will take you with me and the event. And we went from California to Boston to attend uh, uh, this crusade. And why I'm telling you all this? Because I, uh, when I was there, I told him a testimony about a Muslim lady who had a supernatural encounter with Jesus himself. He took her to heaven. He was touched by this testimony. And in that crusade, when I went, I was sitting, he, he, he reserved the first seats for me and Yvette. And he told me, and, and it was in Boston, 25,000 people in the arena. And he said, oh, I would like to introduce to you a friend from Egypt. Harfa, would you come up here to the stage? <laughs> and I said, what, what am I going to say? And then we went up on the stage and he started telling them the testimony of this lady. He said, when I heard this, this testimony, I went out of the room flying, leaving the book of Acts. And after uh, he said the testimony, he gave me the mic and he asked me to say the last part of it. So I stood in front of these 25,000 people and I said the rest. And after that, before he gave his sermon, he, he asked for the altar call. And then it was amazing. After he finished these two days, he was going back to California. I was going to England. And Yvette went with him on the plane and he told her, 
you know, evict how many people accepted the Lord after uh, Arfa spoke. 6,000 people accepted the Lord. So I will, one day when we have time, I will tell you this testimony that touched Benny Hinn. And since, since that time, I, we are connected with him. And uh, I went to the States uh, twice after this, and I, I met him again. It's amazing. So when Benny Hinn heard when, this story... When he heard the testimony of this Muslim lady, he said, I went out of the room flying in, as if I'm, I, I am living the book of Acts. He said, I was so, so touched, flying. And Literally flying or...? No, no. I mean, he was, he was so lifted up spiritually. And he, he said, as if I am living the book of Acts. Mm. 